So let's go to some common signs so that we know that the vagus is on. First is actually yawning. Yeah. It's 11, 11 08 p.m. in Israel. <laughs> so there's yawning. And we're going to talk about yawning in a minute. There's an opening of the ears sensation. Yeah, like after you landed on a plane. There's swallowing, spontaneous swallowing. There's taking an extra breath, like Angela was saying, like uh, Susan was saying, sorry. There's a little noise, like little subtle noises that we get in our stomach. And there's air coming from one of the openings in our bodies, okay? So these are signs that the vagus is on. And what we, what we, what I want to suggest is other um, exercises that have to do with the ocular segment. For instance, let's let let me show you some other exercises that actually turn the vagus on. But I want to say something before that. I want to say that the more we are grounded in ventral, the easier. Will, the easier will come to ventral when we need to. Because when something happens and our body goes into, for instance, with my patient, I actually sat in front of her. I couldn't do the, this exercise because she would have seen me, but I could do a lot of other stuff that she, she couldn't notice. And I was working with myself to regulate my nervous system because I know that I'm sitting in front of her. I know I shouldn't be reactive and I know that I shouldn't lash out and I know that I shouldn't be defensive. I know, I know that all I have to do is apologize for not notifying her earlier that I'm taking a week off. I know. And then I have to take the heat and I have, when she cools down, to be able to talk to her about this heat and the devaluation and everything that goes on with it. I know, but my body is so sympathetic. My pulse races and my, and I can't sit quietly because the sympathetic system, when it is on, it is a, a very, um, it, it's, a, I think the word that comes up to describe the feeling, it's, it's like a disgusting feeling. It's really difficult to be in our bodies in sympathetic arousal. It's a horrible feeling to sit with. And I really want to be able to sit there and be with her until she can cool down and then we're gonna talk about it, okay? So ocular segment exercises, I want to show you another one. Let me just get into the camera. This is the ear. And I want to get, this is the hole of the ear. And above the hole of the ear, I want to get in here. Okay? So it's not the first fold. It's the second fold. I want to get in there. And I just want to play with it a little bit. Just, just, just hold the ear and you can play with it. Just press it a little bit and see if something comes up. Maybe the ears will open. Maybe a yawn, great Angela will come up. <sighs> Maybe an out breath will be longer. See if anything happens. Little dizziness. Oh no, that was before, sorry.
Okay. I can see some yawns coming up and I want to say something about a yawn. I think there are about 20 theories about why we yawn. It has to do with too much CO2. It has to do with cooling the brain. It might have to do with getting a lot of oxygen in really quickly. I don't know. There are, as I said, several theories about it, but I want, I want to say that what happens when we yawn, we feel sort of uncomfortable and somebody sitting in front of us can ask us if they're boring and that's why we yawn. But actually we yawn when we relax. And when we are relaxed, we can feel our chronic fatigue and our chronic, um, what's the word in English? Uh, um, effort, the chronic effort that we put in all the time. And we kind of let go of that because the body can relax and get into a more relaxed state. So actually a yawn is a sign of vagal activation. Another exercise that we can do is I have this toothbrush. I'm not going to use it on, on this end because I'm going to use it on this end later. But what I do is I take this area when I take a toothbrush or just my nails and rub this area, it's a really good stimulation of the vagus nerve. And actually in Chinese medicine, they recommend this as an alternative for when kids need, um, need to have uh, um, the ears punctured, you know? like when they have many infections for babies and small children. And see when you do this, if something comes up, if you swallow or your ears open, right behind the ear, we can start massaging the face and what I find that's really good is just along the cheekbones, I have these two points just about here. See if you can find them, they're fairly painful. And if you're in pain, you found them. And I'm just gonna press in and I ground myself to the chair or to the floor. And again, I wait for a reaction. And as soon as I get the reaction, I'm gone. I don't need to do it again. <sighs> With the oral segment, we have a lot of exercise that, that some of them we actually work with in bioenergetics anyway. See if your mouth is watering, if you have more saliva, yeah? That's also a sign of the social engagement system turning on, yeah? Ears, we said touch and stimulate. Larynx and pharynx, swallowing, sucking. I don't know how to say this in English. In Hebrew, we say li'alua because it's, it's, uh, it, it moves the uvula. The uvula is the little bell-like is that the way to say it, uvula in English? Yeah? Okay, it's not my, my native tongue, English, so. So we wanna move it. We can say in, in, in Hebrew, you have a word, it's called lela'alea. Like, um, I think the Arab language has a lot of in it. So try to see if you can do it, not too much, not too much because it can get you, uh, it, can, it can also get the vomiting reflex on, so. So, uh, by the way, as I was sitting in front of this patient, this is what I was doing very quietly. I was just playing with my uvula so I could ground in ventral. I just took what happens when sympathetic comes on is that our antennae get really, um, um, how would you say, focused on the threat, the source of the threat. And what we want to do is take the antennae and turn them in and work with ourselves. That's why we have to practice. 
So, voice box and trachea. Do you know Ujjayi breathing from yoga? Does anyone know it? Ujjayi breathing in yoga, it has to do with closing when, we, when we're in conditions where we can't really make too much sound. What we do is we whisper the sound. So we have a closure of the, of the voice box enough to do and just breathing like that stimulates your vagus. And a really good exercise is also from yoga. It's the bumblebee exercise. It goes, you start like a horse, you start after you master that because you need to be a little bit soft in order to do that you can go and and um for a more see i i start scratching for a more bee-like movement and it's quite subtle and it's like with a little bit of sound and some movement in your lips. It can be really uh, scratchy in the beginning. But because it works with the voice box and the oral segment and with the airways, and with the diaphragm, it's a really, really good grounding and ventral exercise. And also, if you can do it now a little bit more loudly to yourselves and you can close your eyes, you can feel that it really resonates inside your skull. And remember, those cranial nerves are inside the skull. So we can continue with stimulating the lungs with the stool or the roll. And of course, we can have our grounding exercises and the Paula exercises, exercises I mentioned to incorporate the lower limbs, although they're above, uh, below the diaphragm. And of course, we have so many, so many bioenergetic exercises. Susan, you were tapping a little bit and the exercise, wonderful exercise class that um, I, I was in before, I wrote down her name. It was really wonderful. It was Paula from New York. And so many of her exercises were actually grounding and grounding and ventral exercises. And when we, and Helen yesterday mentioned in her talk, she mentioned pressing down in, with our feet to the ground. Remember she mentioned that? Also pushing down and feeling the impact on the central axis of the body, right to the top of the head and going into the breathing wave that we all know, yeah? Can actually get your whole vagus activated. Yeah, I'm stuck. I don't know why I'm stuck. I don't know why I'm stuck. I'm stuck, but I'm not gonna get into the freeze response just yet because we've been working with our vagus. So what I like to do, I'm just trying to get rid of something here. Okay, on the go micro practice, I think is a good antidote um, to avoid this guilt because 
as I said, what we want is we want to have safety and we don't need to say, okay, now I'm gonna open my yoga mat and I have an hour or half an hour to practice. We can actually do it very, very differently. When we get up in the morning, we can wash our face with cold water. And the other thing is when you, do your, when you take your shower, in the very end, take the faucet to the cold water until it's absolutely cold and just be there for three seconds. That's enough to give a jump start to the vagus. Dramatic teeth brushing, this is why I brought my toothbrush, because when you brush your teeth, which you do anyway, you can do it by moving literally your whole body and having a really dramatic, it's not a, it's not a pretty sight, but it works. Uh, so I really try to incorporate as much as my face of my face in the dramatic teeth brushing. And kids love this. If you teach your kids about this, the whole family can do it and start the whole morning, the terrible morning routine with, uh, with uh, being anchored and grounded in ventral. Conscious biting and eating. We're eating anyway, so why not eat? Again, with a little bit of drama, with some drama in our life. Singing in the car is a really good one. We, we do it anyway as bioenergetic uh, uh, practitioners. We do it anyway. Sometimes we feel something is stuck. We get into the car, we get on the highway, we put on the radio really loud and we sing and then we can cry, right? We do it anyway. So as a routine, everybody's with their cell phones anyway. Nobody's gonna think we're crazy anymore. Everybody is like this in the car anyway. And this is on the go. When I stand in traffic, I do my eyes exercises, even a silly thing like I shift my focus from the windshield to the traffic light and back to the windshield, working with my eyes. So I wanna give you a little bit practice recommendations. And the, the practice recommendations is, first of all, let pleasure guide you because it can't be another guilty thing that you need to do. And we want to promote a feeling of safety. We wanna get that feedback loop working. So it has to be a good feeling for me. My yoga teacher, she's Italian and she says, if he doesn't feel pretty, don't do it. Do it only if it feels pretty. So the same goes for this. The other thing is be creative. I just gave you a few, oops, sorry. I just gave you a few examples, but when I'm minded to my vagus and I'm minded to my cranial nerves, so much can be done just on the go. The way I do the Stanley Rosenberg basic exercise today is completely different just because I, these days, this is what I'm doing. And it's also going to change. I take, there's one bioenergetic exercise that I think I learned from Yardi at, at the time, who used to give many, many wonderful exercise classes. And she used to take the head to one side and then up and down. It's very difficult to do it two weeks after you fell on your back from a camel. But I do this, so I do it much smaller today and I take and I look to the back. So from the side, it looks something like this. Yeah. So it's a much stronger exercise than the basic exercise, but I just play with it and I feel what I wanna do. The other thing is micro exercise. Exercise can be one minute or two minutes, for three minutes, it needs to feel good. It needs to feel nice. And the last thing is to be very, very,
persistent. If you want to make a change, if you want to really bring your being grounded and ventral so it's available for you when you need it most, you have to be persistent and practice it. Find the ways to practice it in your daily life because neuroplasticity is a wonderful, wonderful thing. We can really change our brains and change the way it works, but we, we have to give neuroplasticity the conditions in which it can work. And it can work only when we are persistent, when we do the same exercise again and again and again. In Hebrew, we have a, you know, a militaristic society here in uh, Israel. There's a coined proverb and it says, difficult in practice, easy in battle. I think it's a horrible proverb, but, but it's fitting here, yeah? So we want to practice this grounding and ventral daily in ease and safe conditions so that we may have the infrastructure to turn to when the going gets rough. When we're overwhelmed, it's gonna be really difficult to ground unless we know how. Also, the more we do something, the more we practice, the more the brain responds to support that thing, yeah? The brain's ability to build neural pathways as a result of experience of, is, is based on repetition of neurons firing together, and then they wire together. So the interrelations of neurons and within the neurons themselves, the synapses, they become more elaborate and rich in number. And that's the way that we build a network. That's actually the way that we form a habit, a good one. The guy that wrote the, the, the man that wrote the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali said this practice, this practice becomes rooted, firmly rooted when it is done with persistence. So we want to form a new habit of relaxing, of being grounded and ventral, of feeling good. And it's not just relaxing and feeling good, because being in ventral is being really alive, of being prone to be connected, to be in contact, of self-regulating, of touching, of holding, and being held. We want to change our nervous system and recreate habits. <laughs>